returns from the elections are beginning to come in. NBC will interrupt for any outstanding election developments. We would like to thank the Democratic and Republican parties for relinquishing their time that this program could be heard. <laughs> now, medical science offers proof positive. No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. <laughs> Cigarette program starring Red Skelton with David Forrester and his orchestra, our singing star Anita Ellis, Gigi Pearson, Verna Pelton, Pat McGee, and Wonderful Smith, and yours truly, Rod O'Connor. It's a pleasure to bring you Metro Golden Mayor's popular comedian and the star of the Rolling Cigarette program, Red Skelton. Mike, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 9.03, Rod. 9.03, Red. Yeah. Uh, Red, can't you let me in on it? Surely someone besides you knows what it means. 9.03 means? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Rod, there's only one other guy. Kilroy. <laughs> well, you know that beautiful girl that came in last week and said 9.03? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been kind of showing her around, thinking she might give me a clue, you know, uh, like a picture. Yeah, she's pretty as a picture, too, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. <laughs> She's in focus all over, too. <laughs> Say, by the You're way... You're laughing this week, I see. Yes. I read the small print in my contract. Yeah. <laughs> this straight man could run away with his show. <laughs> I get along with your camera hobby? Well, I think I'm beginning to click now. I'm just getting on to my 4x5 speed graphic. But what does that 4x5 mean? Uh, that means four out of five of my pictures come out blank. <laughs> Was it hard to work a speed graphic? No, it's very simple. First, you consult your light meter, then you check the distance finder, then you uh, set your lens opening, and then the shutter speed, and then click. And you've got a picture. No, you forgot to put the film in. <laughs> well, do you have your own dark room? Uh, yeah, we forgot to pay the light bill last month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she did come back again. Ooh. That 903 girl we met last week. Oh? Oh, Mr. Skelton, mm-hmm. I don't mean to bother you. When you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering, Mr. Skelton, you're interested in photography. Yeah. Could I uh, pose for you sometime? <laughs> well, I really don't know. I. Uh... Well, uh, could you take my picture in a bathing suit? Well, yes, but it's rather chilly for me to be running around the basement. <laughs> well, you think it over, and when you want to call me, I'm in the book. Well, can't be too choosy where we live these days. <laughs> well, goodbye now. Uh, I'll be seeing you, Mr. O'Connor. 903. 903. <laughs> well, it looks like she's got your number. Yeah, I'm not even in the book. <laughs> well, now, folks, we have a surprise for Red. Here's Mr. Coy Watson of the Los Angeles Press Photographers Association. Oh, here to buy me off? (laughs) (laughs) No, we finally decided to accept you as one of our members. Now that you've learned to operate your camera correctly, we want you to be one of us, Red. Raleigh? (laughs) (laughs) And we've listened to your show and decided that you should really be a member. The boys like me, huh? (laughs) Yes, yes, we... uh... We figured you'll be needing a job any time at the rate you're going now. I think he's kidding. I, this is not my business. You know that my mother doesn't know that I'm on the radio or in pictures. That's a fact. She's never seen me. Break her heart if she knew I was in show business. She thinks I'm a bookie, you know. Uh, but seriously, Red... The boys of the Los Angeles Press Photographers Association recognize you, as do thousands of others, as one of the greatest showmen in the country. And as we also know, having worked with you in past years, that you are one of the most cooperative stars in Hollywood. But above this, we consider you a regular guy and a real fellow. 
And it was with these thoughts in mind that we, the news photographers, representing the Los Angeles newspapers, national news syndicates, and the national motion picture news reels, voted to make you an honorary member of this association. And so in behalf of our 97 active members, I, the president of this group, take sincere pleasure in presenting to you your gold membership card in the Los Angeles Press Photographers Association. Well, thank you very much. It's all right, Red, but uh, don't forget to draw the slide. Yes. <laughs> now, medical science offers proof positive. No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. Yes, proof positive. No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new Raleigh. Scientific tests of America's six leading brands based on a method used by the United States government. Tests certified by a jury of 14 doctors have proved conclusively. No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than Raleigh's. So smokers enjoy the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh's. And remember, medical science offers proof positive... No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new Raleigh cigarettes. And now, uh, 903, Anita. 903, Red. And uh, Anita's going to sing tonight, uh, A Garden in the Rain. <laughs> A garden in the rain Close to a little leafy lane A touch of color Meets skies of gray The raindrops kiss the flower beds The blossoms raise the thirsty a perfume, thank you, they seem to say. Surely here was charm beyond compare to view. Maybe it was just that I was there. Our characters are fictional. If you can picture such people living, you'll find that they're out of focus and should be overexposed. <laughs> Character 27 is entitled, You Want to See a Picture? I doubt if there's a father alive who hasn't proudly forced the stranger to look at the photograph of his wife or children. And Willie Lump Lump is our victim. <laughs> I knew 
knew I was in the wrong place. <laughs> Well, well, what are you going to eat today? Food for a change. <laughs> and hurry it up, will you? Oh, but you haven't ordered yet. Well, I'm in a hurry. I'll order while I'm eating. <laughs> hey, got any meat? I like some meat. You got any? Yes, sir. We got chicken, roasted, toasted, fried, stewed, and I like things. Chicken, chicken, chicken. I've eaten so much chicken the last two years, I'm getting a foul mind. <laughs> Uh, I'll have a cup of tea, a cup of tea. Do you mind if I sit here, buddy? Not at all. Uh, I'm just having a t- cup of tea, you know. <laughs> I usually drink canned heat. Coffee keeps me awake. You know? My name is Lon Thompson. I didn't catch your name. I didn't throw it. <laughs> it's Willie Lump Lump. Lump Lump, how do you spell that? With two lumps, man. <laughs> Uh, is anything else I can do for you? Yeah, hold my nose while I drink it. Man. Brother, you have what is generally known as bats in the belfry. Yeah, and what's more, they ring a chime every hour on the hour. Now, by the way, how is your wife? You trying to start an argument? How long have you been married? I don't know. I lost track of well, how old were you when you got married? We were both 29. I'm 32. Now my wife's 26. <laughs> anyway, I'm celebrating my wooden wedding anniversary. Wooden wedding, eh? Yeah. That's five years. No, we've only been married two, but she's a blockhead. You know? <laughs> Boy, can she nag. Noon, morning, and night, nag, nag. Yeah, I guess I'm lucky. My wife's an angel. Oh, I'm sorry. How long has she been dead? <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I meant that uh, she's kind. Oh, I see. <laughs> we have three kids. Uh, have you been blessed? Yeah, we ain't got any. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you'd be happier if you had a youngster. Yeah. You can watch them grow up yeah. and follow your footsteps. Oh, they couldn't follow my footsteps. I hardly made it here myself. <laughs> You don't happen to have a picture of your wife on you, do you? Yeah, in my mind. That's why I got this shocked expression on <laughs> I mean, uh, don't you have a photograph? No, I can't get a picture developed. They're afraid to stay in a dark room with a face like that. <laughs> You'd be lots happier if you carried a picture. Would you care to see the pictures of my wife and kids? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> what did you say? I said, no, I don't want to see them. Uh, just a second, wise guy. I'm a proud father, and it's been the custom since the beginning of photography for a man to carry pictures of his kids. That's why I never liked the Indians, either. They didn't stop with carrying pictures. They carried the kids, too. <laughs> It'll only take a second to show Look, them. I don't want to see them, Bub. If you don't mind, Bub, I don't want to see them. <laughs> in here for a cup of tea and nothing else. You know? Look, all the time I was in the army, I all I did was look at pictures. Going across the ocean in Italy every five minutes, some guy said, want to see a picture of my wife? Yeah, oh, that's it. Want to see a picture of my kids? Yeah, that's it. The cute, cutest kids I ever saw the ugliest things I ever saw. I don't have to look at them things anymore, and I don't want to see yours. If you don't mind, I'll just have my tea. Now, look, wise guy. Here, let go my lapel, will you? You're going to look at my family pictures, or I'll take you out to my truck and wind you around the cranks. Yeah, well, come on, just let go of my suit, will you? Hey, Bob Hope has got an award for being the best-dressed sportsman, you know? You know what he was wearing at the time? What? One of Bing Crosby's shirts. <laughs> Yes. Oh, well, why didn't you say that? Here, you don't happen uh, by any chance to have a picture of your beautiful wife and kids, will you? Uh, would you really like to see them? Would you really? Would you? Really? Well, let's not get sickening about it. 
Gosh, I ain't showed them for so long, I almost forgot what they look like. Yeah, I'll bet it's been all ten minutes since you had them. Let's see, what'd I do with them? Uh, oh, here they are. Maybe you lost. Here in my wallet, I've got some pictures of my kids. Here. Oh, well, let's see. Hey, this kid looks like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Give me back that five-dollar bill. <laughs> Too many wrinkles for a young kid. Now, medical science offers proof positive. No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat irritating tars than the new, smoother, better tasting Raleigh. Yes, proof positive. No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat irritating tars than the new Raleigh. That lovely star of the shocking Miss Pilgrims, Betty Grable says, quote, I've read the reports, and medical science has proved no other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars. That's why I've switched to Raleigh's for smoking pleasure. Right, Betty Grable. Those tests were based on a method used by the United States government. So friends, enjoy the new, smoother, better-tasting Raleigh. And remember, medical science offers proof positive. No other leading cigarette gives you less nicotine, less throat-irritating tars than the new Raleigh cigarettes. David Forrester now introduces a new number by Gil Baumgart, one of our outstanding young composers. It's called Frustration. Amateur Photographers. Children are always interested in pictures, and a great pastime for them would be let them have a camera of their own. Junior, where are you? Here. Are you in the kitchen near the cookie jar? <coughs> Junior, how would you like to 
do something well, for I'm me? Well, I'm kind of weak from lack of sleep, you know. I didn't take my nap for days. Well, I, I wanted to send John and Aaron to the drugstore. You mean where they got them ice cream cones? Yes. Chocolate sodas? Yes. Pineapple float? Yes. Well, I'm still a little weak, but I think I could hobble down there. <laughs> well, I'm not going to give you money for any of those things, Junior. They're bad for your stomach. Well, I won't swallow them, see. I'll just taste them and then spit them out, you know. <laughs> but I only want you to get the film I left there to be developed. Oh, you mean the ones Gramp took? Yes, I'm dying to see how they came out. Yeah, they'll be blurred like they always is, you know. <laughs> Poor old Gramp. He just can't get nothing in focus, can he, huh? That's because he's nearsighted. <laughs> Beersighted is the word. <laughs> And while you're at the drugstore, ask the man to reload this box camera for me. Okay. And here's a dollar and a quarter. Okay, kiddo. Okay, kiddo. All right. Now, you take that and repeat what you're supposed to do at the drugstore. Well, get your pictures, reload your camera, and pick up a few gumdrops. I didn't say anything about gumdrops. I know, but you will when I get home. Do you want to take your dog with no, you? No, he got fleas. I don't want to take him. He embarrasses me to death. He scratches right out in the open. <laughs> Well, if he has so many fleas, why don't you give him a bath? Never, boy. I wouldn't give him anything I wouldn't take myself, boy. <laughs> now, come on, Chipper. You can go ahead. Junior, be careful crossing the street. A car might hit yeah, you. Yeah, and the new ones don't have bumpers, either. <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah. And you don't want to cave the front of a car in. No. <laughs> boy, he sure does love me, don't he? Huh? <laughs> okay, bye, Kayo. Bye, dear. <laughs> Sorry, little boy. That's okay. I'm not hurt. You just knocked me down with you. Why, aren't you sweet? <laughs> well, goodbye, and remember 903-903. I got a feeling that stuff like that's going to make me lose interest in my tricycle. <laughs> Looking, I think I'll spin some of these stools around at the counter. Junior, stop it. Stop spinning these empty stools around. Well, they're too heavy with the people in them there. I can't spin them, you know. Hey, my grandma wants them pictures she left here to be developed, and she wants you to reload the box camera here. Well, that's simple. Let me have the camera, son. Look, don't call me, son, if you don't mean it, because my grandma's awful quick on the uptake, you know. <laughs> Why, Junior, I'd love to have a little boy like you. You've been drinking them prescriptions again, ain't you? Well, here's your camera all loaded. Now you better get home. Okay, I want to learn how to take pictures. I haven't the time to teach you. Hey, you got time to sweep up the store? No, I haven't. Then you better show me how to take pictures. I said beat it. Oh, you yelled at me! You I yelled. did not! <laughs> Take pictures with this camera. Now, you just look through this little window on the top. Let's see. Move your big fat head, will you? <laughs> and when you see what you want, push down on this little lever. Yeah? And just turn this little knob until you come to another number. Well, here I am, three years old, and I didn't know that. Well, live and learn, I always said. Yes, Mr. Rach, you're learning. You won't live long. Yeah. <laughs> now, that all comes to $1.25. Here's your dollar. Take it out of that. Dollar's not enough. <laughs> can't take it out of that. Well, don't give it back to me. I don't force money on anybody or nothing. Your grandmother must have given you more money. Not a quarter, perhaps? No, she didn't. No. Then what have you got your fist doubled up like that for? That's to hit you in the nose if you try to take this quarter out of me other hand. <laughs> oh, so you do have another quarter. Oh, all right. Take it, take it there. Uh, no means nothing to me. Me poor little piggy bank. I'll go to bed without eat supper tonight. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Junior. Here's a peppermint to console you. I don't want one. You don't? No, I want two. <laughs> Here's your camera. Goodbye. Come on, Skippy. Come on, boy. Come on. My, what a nice day. Everybody looks so happy. Widow does they know I was roaming the streets loose. <laughs> Look at that big car pulling up. Brand new one. Boy, that's really new, too. What's the matter, puppy? You never growl unless there's something wrong. Don't you like that car, or are you just growling like everybody else because you ain't got it, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a picture of the car and show the grandma here. Yeah. Ooh, look at me. Look at him getting out of them big suitcases. There's one standing here all by himself. I think I'll mosey over and see what's cooking around here. Hello, mister. Okay, kid, keep moving. We're doing a little job on the inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you nuts 
nothing but a big bag of wind, you is. So is your grandmother. How'd you know? <laughs> hey, you know, you know, my dog don't like you, he don't. That's tough. Now get going, kid. Head for home before you get hurt. Well, I can get hurt there just as fast, you know. Hey, wh- why didn't you go in the bank with your buddies? They won't let me go with them. Why? I don't use ponds. Oh. <laughs> you couldn't have used that guy either. Now, uh, don't, uh, you, you know, I don't like your looks. I've never seen somebody so ornery looking in my life. Since I looked in the mirror last, i never seen nobody that way. Get moving, kid. When my friends come out of that bank, there's liable to be some fireworks. Fireworks? Yes. Well, then you wouldn't mind having a little punk like me around then. <laughs> I'm warning you for the last time. Oh, you got a water pistol, too. I can see it under your coat. Squirt me with it. Squirt. Squirt me in the face with a water pistol. On your way. Here, don't. Go. Yeah, and I go over to carry the ribbons. You see how he's frowning at you? He protects me. Well, come on, get from under the car and protect me. I'm going to count to three, and if you ain't out of sight... I'm going to take your picture first. Yeah, hey, you can't take my picture. Come here with that camera. Hey, come out, but I'll give you a run for me. Faster, faster, faster. No, no, I've been running so fast, I was way beyond myself. Well, you're as white as a sheep. You mean I'm tattletale gray? What happened? Well, I was walking past the bank, and some men jumped out of a great big car, and they went inside, and they had guns, old cannons, they had dirty looks, and a bunch of bank robbers they were. How do you know they were bank robbers? They all look like Humphrey Bogart. Now, who could that be? I don't know, but eight to five, whoever they say, looking for me, don't... No, 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 don't, don't open the door, don't oh, open the door. Stop that, it's They're coming to get me, Grandma. Good heavens. They're going to take me for a while. Junior, get out of that birdcage. <laughs> They'd have to take me, too. No, well, maybe they ain't enough room, you know. Hi, it's Officer John Decker. We just received word that Junior was a witness to a bank holdup. Yeah, and I ain't talking till I see me mouthpiece. <laughs> Men a block away said he saw the boy take a picture of one of the bandits escaping. Now, the insurance company will pay $10,000 for the pictures if they identify the bandits. $10,000? Goodness, that'd keep me in bubble gum for the rest of my life, would it? I'll go get the camera. I'll go get the camera. Junior, come here. Now, hit it under the porch. There you is, you little money-making rascal, you. <laughs> boy, I'm going to see if the pictures are in focus. Look at the pictures. Let's see. Red and black on one side and yellow stuff in the middle. What is that? <laughs> My eyes must be getting bad. I don't remember taking anything like that. Well, you can save your money. Here's the film. I took it out of camera and it's all blank. Oh, Junior, it has to be developed first. Now she tells me. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry this happened. Well, you stay here. I'm going to go catch them crooks and get me bubblegum money. Oh, you're too little. No, I'm not. I'll take some rocks with me, and I'll put lumps on their heads so big that when the ambulance comes, the bumps will ride, and they'll have to walk behind them. Well. I'll sneak up to their hideout, and they'll riddle me the bitch with a shoot gun and the shotgun, and then they're going to keep right on walking. <laughs> and then they'll mow me down with machine gun fire, and there I will be dead. A hero against crime. Oh, no, 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 no. What's the matter? I scared me. <laughs> bless his little heart. Yeah, bless his little heart. We'll be back next week at the same time. Let's go from here to Forrest and his office to Anita Alice, Winnipeg, and Peter Pierce, and Patrick, and wonderful Smith, and here's Julie Rado Connor. Well, that's Peter Graham. Great scout and saying, Hi now, and thanks for listening, and thanks for buying Wally. Sir Walter Raleigh, the pipe tobacco that rates superior on all five counts. Check them. A rich, ripe, full-bodied, burly blend. Sir Walter Raleigh pipe tobacco. Mellowed with rum for extra smoothness. Deep down satisfying goodness. That's Sir Walter Raleigh pipe tobacco. Clean smoking all the way down. No soggy heel. Leaves only a clean, dry ash. And that's Sir Walter Raleigh pipe tobacco. Rip cut for slow, even cool burning. Yes, Sir Walter Raleigh pipe tobacco. The brand of grand aroma. Keeps home sweet home. It's Sir Walter Raleigh. Sooner or later, your favorite tobacco. Smoke Sir Walter Raleigh. The quality pipe tobacco of America. Brown and Williamson invite you to other good listening during the week. Listen to the People Are Funny program with Art Linkletter next Friday and join us again with Red Skelton next Tuesday. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor. Red Skelton is brought to you by the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. 903. 903. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. from the elections are beginning to come in. NBC will interrupt for any outstanding election developments.
We would like to thank the Democratic and Republican parties for relinquishing their time that this program could be heard. Now, medical science offers proof positive. No other leading cigarette gives you less...